Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really appreciate you, you stopping here. Also, really appreciate uh, Rabbi Yaakov uh, Menken. Did, did I say your first name right? I, I thought about that it for a really second. That was really good, actually. Good. Was- well, well, Rabbi, really glad to have you on the program. Thanks a lot for taking the time. There's a lot that I want to get to, and uh, we don't have that much time. So let's just jump right in. And, and by the way, go and check out the rabbi's website. It's coalitionforjewishvalues.org, which is uh, uh, awesome stop. So go, go and check that out on your web as soon as you can. Let's talk about the changeover leadership in Israel, if you don't mind. I mean, I know how close Israel is with the United States. It's our best friend in the Middle East. Obviously, Christians and and uh, and and Israel very very connected as well. Israel is the promised land. I think a lot of people think that heaven is the promised land. It's not. It's Israel, and uh, the, the importance of Israel historically never changes in my mind, but depending on who's in leadership there and who's in leadership here, it does seem to change in the minds of many. So let's just start from the very basic start. Netanyahu is out. He was in uh, in control for a long time. Got a new guy in there now. Does that make a difference to us? And what's the difference with the Israeli people? For, for us as American Jews, I, I, I think the biggest uh, change in the picture is uh, this is your latest, this is almost a uh, delivered as a refutation to Israel as the quote unquote apartheid state in that region. Uh, It's for a long time been the only country in that region with both Jews and Arabs in its Supreme Court, government, media, you name it. But now you have a government cobbled together that includes an expressly Islamic Arab party in the government as part of the leadership. And it's part of a leadership along with a uh, right-wing party with Naftali Bennett being characterized by the left for so long as a racist anti-Arab. And yet now he's created a government with them. So I I think for uh, for Americans, there's actually a positive message that can be taken away from that change in government and change in leadership, uh, not even because of what they will accomplish, but just because of what this government represents. It's Rabbi uh, Yaakov Menken. I'm getting this, the first name right, but now the second name is, is affecting me for no reason. <laughs> uh, but but I appreciate meeting you, appreciate having you on. As we do this more, more, I'm sure that the name will flow more freely from my tongue. If you can, can you just very quickly, if this is your purview, if it's not, we can move on. Just very quickly uh, uh, explain to those who are watching and listening the dynamic of Palestine and Israel. And here's what I mean. There never really was a Palestine. The Palestinians are really Jordanian and they're Egyptian. They're not really Palestinians. That's just something that I guess we've taken from the biblical Philistine. Um, Israel was historically, that was their land for 4,000 years. They kept on being driven out by the, by the country surrounding them. But now in this day and age, there are young people who are growing up in a generation who really believe that Israel showed up and said, I'm taking Palestine from you, which really didn't happen. There wasn't a Palestine there, right? Is, do I have the dynamic right, or, or is the modernized view of that region more correct? Actually, Joe, you put it together incredibly well. Uh, the name Palestine itself comes from European colonialism. That's what it is. It's Greco-Roman colonialism. It goes back uh, quite a few years, but they are the ones who called that region Palestine specifically in order to disenfranchise the Jews from their homeland, which was called Judea or right. the land of Israel, because it rather expressly said what it was and whose it was. This idea that Jews didn't live there and moved in like a bunch of colonialists is entirely fictional. And in fact, the modern day Palestinian is a racist concept. And why do I say that? Because if you go back to the late 1800s, the majority of Jerusalem's population was Jews. And that's before there was any Zionism. It was all about Jews wanting to live in their holy land. And so the majority of Jerusalem's population was already Jews in the late 19th century. And yet a Palestinian can be, it's not one culture or one people. It is Arab Muslims, it is Arab Christians, it is Bedouins, it is Druze. The, what, what holds them together? What is the fabric? It's anybody who lived in that land, British mandatory Palestine, in the 1930s who wasn't Jewish. It excludes Jews. It's a racist concept, as I said. It's amazing. I, I appreciate you explaining it that way. It is Rabbi uh, Yaakov Menken, getting better, 
Um, uh, go to his website right now. Again, it's coalitionforjewishvalues.org, coalitionforjewishvalues.org. I love the way that you explained it, and I also want people watching and listening to understand, and I don't even know that you knew that we're going to go to, on this angle, but I love the education. Um, I want people to understand that that Palestine, or what would be Palestine, the PLO, was offered 97% of everything it wanted. It, that was in Bill Clinton's day. It, here's right. 97%, and, and Yasser Arafat said no, he rejected it. Is there in your mindset any place to even imagine that Hamas, a terrorist organization that runs what would be Palestine, would ever accept uh, Israel even existing. It seems to me, Rabbi, that they don't even want Israel to be on the map, then they'll be satisfied. Well, Hamas has Nazi genocide written into its charter. It claims to be following a hadith which uh, is or is not genuine that says that the redemption cannot come until the trees and rocks themselves are crying out, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. And that is within the Hamas charter. So that's what the organization is about, and that is who they are. It is a hate group. It was created for that purpose. And, of course, all of this terrorism that it is inflicting on Israel is trying to just gradually do that mission. Every time they manage to kill a civilian, they celebrate this in the streets because they're accomplishing their mission of, of killing people in pursuit of genocide. So, uh, no, the, the idea that Hamas would ever come to the table with Israel, there, there has to be regime change. The, the people, the Arab people themselves, obviously, like Arabs elsewhere in the region, can change their feelings. But right now in Hamas schools and even the Palestinian Authority schools, where they are glorifying terrorists, where they literally name a school after a terrorist or name a city square after a terrorist based on the number of people they killed, that's not going to lead anybody towards peace. You had a guy in office, and it's uh, Rabbi uh, Yaakov Menken. He, again, is uh, is an expert on more than just Israel. We're going to talk about Kufi in a second as well. But we had a guy in office in Washington, D.C., and Donald Trump, who said, yeah, Jerusalem is the capital. I'm not going to be like 12 previous presidents who promised to move our embassy. I'm going to do it. And he did it. And no, there wasn't bloodshed. And no, the Middle East didn't explode. In fact, the Middle East started shuddering outside of, uh, of Israel going, oh, man, we got a guy in there who actually is going to do what he says he's going to do. He, he proved our friendship with Israel. He proved our support of Israel. And now we've got a guy who is giving Iran money in Joe Biden. And that money is then being doled out to Hezbollah and to Hamas. And Israel now is, is it's always been in the crosshairs, but it's even more so now. But you don't have support of the big guy. Now, Biden might say he supports Israel, but his actions show something very different. What should we know about the difference in leadership here and how it affects what, what happens over there? The problem is that Biden is being pulled to the left. If you go look at his career, he really was a friend to Israel throughout his career and even remains himself to some extent. Uh, The problem is that you have anti-Semitism flourishing in Congress. We issued a statement last week that pointed out that Representative Ilhan Omar's rhetoric is it's not that it's about Israel. It's that is the same rhetoric that is being used to incite crowds that then go up and beat out beat ordinary Jews in New York and L.A. and other cities across the country. Right. So that type of dangerous rhetoric is being Uh, coddled, not just tolerated. She's being put on not only on the Foreign Affairs Committee, but she's now vice chair of a subcommittee whose purview includes global human rights. And represent and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi wants us to believe that because she criticized and stripped the uh, assignments of Marjorie Taylor Greene for statements about Jewish space lasers, she never said that she's serious about fighting anti-Semitism. That's the problem that Joe is dealing with. And a lot of the members of the administration, sadly, are these type of anti-Israel and even they they believe that same anti-Semitic rhetoric. And it's the further that goes, the deeper it goes in government, the more trouble that that will mean, not only for Israel, but for Jews and everybody else in America. Coalition for Jewish Values dot org is the website. Rab, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Menken, and I appreciate you taking the time. Let's talk about Kufi. Kufi is Christians United for for Israel, and it's an amazing organization. It, of course, is um, uh, the organization uh, that John Hagee, Pastor John Hagee, who's local here to where I am in my flagship, where he's a very good friend of mine. 
Um, and I've learned a lot about Kufi from him. Um, what exactly is the coalition? Because again, people think that Christians and Jews are somehow on polar opposites and we're not. We're actually very, very much alike. And then we can have a discussion about who Jesus was later. But at the end of the <laughs> right, right uh, but, but at the end of the day, there really is a coalition there, and it's one that that's massive. What is it? Three, four, five million people now in this coalition. Uh, tell, tell me more about that. Well, Christians United for Israel has grown to be, I believe, now it's ten million. Oh wow! Uh, it, it's the most massive pro-Israel Christian coalition in in the world, and there, of course, uh, Rabbi uh, Rabbi Arya Scheinberg, uh, in the very early days of this organization. Um, was a great friend of of Pastor Hagee's initiative simply because when Pastor Hagee proposed what he wanted to do, a lot of the Jewish community, because, you know, there's a bad history there between Christians and Jews, and a lot of Jews who are unfortunately very distant from religion and they don't recognize religious sincerity, they were very uh, hesitant to embrace what it was that Pastor Hagee had in mind. And Rabbi Arya Scheinberg, the Orthodox leader, uh, said, but maybe he's a good person. You've got to give him a hearing. You've got to hear him out. And that actually enabled in, in a good way for Christians United to, for Israel to start up and start up an alliance with the Jewish community that remains to this day. And perhaps the, the poignant reason to bring this up is that Rav Arya Scheinberg just last Friday passed away. And the friendship, you know, Pastor Hagee lost a really close friend last Friday when Rabbi Scheinberg passed away. I think the world did. And I, and I believe I met uh, Rabbi Scheinberg when we did Four Blood Moons with uh, with uh, John Hagee. I'm pretty sure that that he was on the panel that I, I was the moderator of afterwards. And just mm-hmm. a really, really sweet guy. Just a really great man. Can you imagine, Rabbi, if we went into every relationship the way that he went into that relationship, maybe he's a good guy. Maybe she's a good woman. Maybe maybe they're just really good human beings and we can have a discussion about what our disagreements are. How much better would the world be if we just took that second? Well, our, our organization, I, the, the interesting thing is that the left likes to talk about tolerance, but their version of tolerance is that everybody has to agree with them that there's no such thing as a right answer. Right. Well, guess what? That's an absolutist position. Real tolerance is when you sit down and find common ground with people you totally disagree with, like traditional Jews and traditional Christians and traditional Muslims, for that matter. Right. Get them all at the same table and say, wait a minute, there's certain agendas here that we would pursue together. And I can't tell you the positive reception that we in our organization have had because of our willingness to sit down and talk with allies about the issues where we can work together. And uh, on, honestly, a lot of uh, conservative Christians find it a breath of air to finally find Jews who actually think that biblical values are a good thing. Well, for some reason in America, Jews follow the Democrat policies, which makes no sense. We'll talk about that next time at length. It's Rabbi Yaakov Menken and Coalition for Jewish You know, I'm saying it now as if I knew it from the beginning, which is good. <laughs> Hopefully the name is rolling off my tongue better. So next time you come on, let, let's break down even more stuff that you're working on. Um, we've blown through a, a, about, about 12 minutes, and I feel like I just started the conversation. Can we do this again very soon? Oh, I'd, I'd love it. We could talk about Fulton v. Philadelphia. There's all kinds of things we could talking about that uh, where it's common ground. I agree with you, and I think that the more we tell people that we're more alike than we think we are, the more we could have good, solid conversations, and then we work out our differences later. Right now in this day and age, as you know, we're acting as if we all hate each other. Then we have to find out if we like each other second. That's not the way I've ever lived, and I don't think that's the way Jews or Christians or even Muslims um, live if, if, as you said, we're all sitting at the same table, maybe breaking bread, right? That's right. Rabbi, thanks a million. Uh, Let's do it again very soon. We're back after this. Stay right here.